Did you think degrees of freedom refer to losing your freedom? Well, don't sweat over it. Let's explore more about them. Welcome back to Learning Puri, a channel for applied learning where you get tips and tutorials on a variety of topics just like this one. In this video, we will reclaim our degrees of freedom. What I mean is that we will explore the concept of degrees of freedom in statistics. So let's get started. Degrees of freedom is expressed in a couple of ways. Either during a lecture, the professor with a simple wave of their hand say, we will deal with it later or it is defined in statistical textbooks. Some of these definitions are very technical, whilst some are outright confusing. On a lighter note, such definitions sometimes remind me of Shakespeare. Very grandiloquent, but hardly limpid to understand. At least to me. However, a far simpler definition is that degrees of freedom are the number of observations or bits of information in the data that are free to vary when we attempt to estimate statistical parameters. Simply remember these three golden points. Number of observations in the data. How many of these are free to vary when estimating statistical parameters. For a better understanding of this definition, let us consider a set of these 10 mobile handsets. Let us assume you had the luxury to own all these 10 mobile handsets courtesy of this generous dude. So if you had to choose one new handset every day to use, then on the first day you will have a choice of 10 handsets. The next day you could choose from amongst 9 handsets. The day after it would be 8 handsets to choose from. If we kept going on, then on the 10th day, you will not be left with any choice except for the last handset that was remaining. So, effectively, starting from day 1, your degrees of freedom to choose a mobile handset would reduce from 10 on day 1 to 1 on day 10. The concept of degrees of freedom is like what we saw in this illustration on mobile handsets. Using the same example, we now take a sample of 5 objects from a set of these 10 objects. We need to estimate a statistical parameter like the arithmetic average of price for these 5 objects. We say that we are estimating the average price since we are using a sample and do not know the actual population. Note the emphasis on the word estimation when it comes to any calculation carried out on a sample. For a moment, let us further assume that we already know the arithmetic average of price for these five objects as 7000. If these five objects are represented by this data set as follows. Then for the average price of this data set to be 7000, the price of the last object must be 6000. If it were anything else, the average would be anything else but 7000. We represent this average of the sample by x bar. So estimating the average for the data set, we have already lost one degree of freedom. Taking this further, we want to determine the spread of the data set around this estimated mean. We do this using the standard deviation. To calculate the standard deviation of the population, we use this formula. However, if you have seen this previous video on moments, you will appreciate that we are dealing with mu, which is the population mean. If we replace the population population mean mu by its estimate x bar, then the equation transforms as follows. But we have already noted that in estimating the sample mean, we have lost one degree of freedom and that must be accounted for somewhere in the equation. So the new equation further transforms as follows. Understand in other words that when we are estimating the standard deviation s for the sample, we have already lost the degree of freedom with the sample mean being 
fixed. Once you have assimilated this fact, I am sure that you will now clamor and argue on logic related to loss of degree of freedom when calculating the population standard deviation. Well, a simple explanation for that is population by definition means everything or all possible objects taken together. So, if anything changes in the population, the entire parameter gets reworked. So, effectively, we are not losing any freedom. Further, conceptually, degrees of freedom work in the same way when estimating regression parameters or when using chi-square tests. However, it depends on what is being estimated. Kurtosis and skewness is just one more place where the concept of degrees of freedom is used. Watch this video to know more on kurtosis and skewness. Till we meet again, stay healthy and stay peaceful. Thanks for watching.